Hi, this is Mr. Woodbury from College of the Sequoias, and we're just going to go over a few things from Section 1.1 in our statistics class. First, let's talk about qualitative versus quantitative variables. Qualitative comes from the keyword quality. So we're talking about variables that are categorical in nature. Meanwhile, quantitative comes from the keyword quantity. And when we talk about quantitative, we're talking about variables that are numerical. Let's try to put that into practice here. Eye color. What sort of answers would you be expecting if you were collecting people's eye colors? Brown, blue, green. These are categories, not numerical values. So here we're talking about qualitative. Okay, how about distance from college? How far from the college are you? Is this a category or a numerical value? Well, this is something that we would measure in terms of miles or some other unit. These are numerical values and they behave as numerical values. So here we're talking about quantitative. Here's the one that's a little tricky. Yelp reviews, one, two, three, four, or five stars. This looks like numerical data, but just the same, a Yelp review of one star could be replaced by a category like terrible. Two stars could be replaced by bad. Three stars by okay, and so on. These are really categories. They are not numerical values. Therefore, this is qualitative. If you perform arithmetic with the numerical values you have and the differences or sums make sense, then you're dealing with quantitative data. But uh, consider Yelp reviews of three and four stars. We know which review is better, but how much better is a four-star restaurant than a three-star restaurant? We can't measure that difference. That's what makes it categorical rather than numerical. So just because you see numbers doesn't necessarily make it quantitative. Other examples would be things like zip codes or uniform numbers for football players. Next, I wanna talk about discrete versus continuous variables. Discrete variables are variables that are measured with gaps between possible values. And for continuous variables, there are no gaps between possible values. In this class, what I want you to think about is that discrete variables are variables where we're counting something. And continuous variables are things that we measure in some physical way, like time, weight, distance, etc. Let's try a few examples. First, the number of classes that you're taking this semester. The number of classes you're taking this semester is going to be some sort of whole number, one class, two classes, etc. This is discrete. Your height, your height is a physical measurement that makes this continuous. And the idea you wanna think about is if you take two people of two different heights, is it possible that there's a person with a different height between those two? Sure there is. Now, if you take that person and either or the other, you can find somebody in that range and so on. All the values are possible, that makes it continuous. Another way to think about it in this class is we're talking about whole numbers for discrete versus decimal values for continuous. So how about this one, age? We asked a group of people their age, they wrote down their age. Are these data discrete or continuous? Well, at first it seems like they're going to be discrete because people are going to say 18, 21, 27, 19, 45. They're going to answer in whole numbers, but those people are not exactly those ages. Age is a measure of how much time you've been alive. That's a physical measurement. Age is continuous. If you ask a young child how old they are, they may say something like two and a half, two and three quarters. They don't always use whole numbers and they're actually on the right track here because age is continuous. Just because the values that are reported are typically whole numbers, 
doesn't necessarily make it discrete. Now, if we change that problem around slightly and we said, how many birthdays have you had? Now that's something that we count that would be discrete. Finally, I want to talk about levels of measurement. And there are four levels of measurement from weakest to strongest, meaning what we can do the least with to what we can do the most with, and that's nominal ordinal interval ratio. And some students like to write down those first letters, N-O-I-R. That is a French word, noir, um, and that may help you to remember the order that they belong in. First, there's a split between the top two and the bottom two. Nominal and ordinal data are data that are qualitative, categorical. Interval and ratio data, those are numerical data, quantitative. So the first question you should ask when you're trying to determine what level of measurement you have, if it's categorical, you're at the top of the page. If it's numerical, you're at the bottom of the page. Then there's a second series of questions that can narrow it down further. Ordinal data can be put in order. Nominal data cannot. So nominal data, we're talking about categories only. Ordinal data, we're talking about categories that we can put in order from lowest to highest, from worst to best. For numerical data, interval or ratio data, the difference here is that the ratio level data have a zero starting point. And what you really want to think about is in terms of negative numbers, for interval data, negatives are possible. But for ratio level data, there are no negative values. So think about those two sets of questions that you can ask. Is it categorical? Yes. Then I try to figure out if they can be put in order or not. No. If it's numerical, then I have to figure out whether negatives are okay, interval, or not, ratio.